The comments on yesterday's video were a little bit brutal, some of them, but to be honest, probably deservedly so. Let's be honest, this summer hasn't exactly gone to plan so far. Saying all of that, and without any new additions though, our pre-season prediction sits at 10th. That feels somewhat respectable. Of course, that is largely bumped up by NDIA, whose contract's expiring, but we're just going to pretend that's not a thing. Since last episode, I have taken it upon myself just to renew the contracts of some of my staff members. Kind of forgot to renew some of them. So I've sorted that out behind the scenes, looking to add in a couple of new scouts and coaches and stuff. Nothing too exciting, but ultimately, we want to maintain our status as a team that has one of the best staff setups in the championship. And when it comes to the team itself, I have started to just block out a team whereby if I don't get any more deals done, what would I actually do to start the year? I hope we will get some deals done, to be clear. This is what I've cooked up. I feel like this is a team that makes the most of my current players. Now, you might notice a player here who wasn't even in the first team last episode. Raul Bilardo, the lad who we signed from Racing Santander for £1.7 million. I've come around to the fact that I absolutely love the look of this guy as a deep line playmaker. And I'm kind of desperate to give him a load of minutes. 19 years old, professional personality, turns 20 next month. Either footed as well. Yeah, he's not the quickest player in the world, but as part of a new look defence, I feel like he could do a good job against Jao Victor on the other side. I feel like Victor is such a good defensive player who has a little bit of passing range. And I'm hoping that with Victor's amazing mentals when it comes to winning the ball back, his aggression, anticipation, bravery, he can kind of make up for the defensive deficiencies of Bilardo. Am I mad thinking that this is actually a really good defensive midfield partnership? I don't think I am. Elsewhere in the team, I am looking at the striking area. Of course, we lost <laughs> we, we lost Oscar last episode. So Roger Ospina really has to hit the ground running. And in spite of the fact he didn't perform amazingly there last year, I feel like Sam is an advanced forward. I could play him at centre attack in mid, but I just feel like with his 12 passing and 8 vision, he's never going to be the creative type. And so I've decided this year we're committing to making him a striker. Elsewhere with this preliminary 11, I am looking at Kamara thinking you could be a good attacking midfielder down the line. A player who has a massive, massive amount of room to grow. And I think that's a really crucial thing to realise with this team. Going into the summer, I was thinking, let's make the playoffs. Let's try and get promoted. With what's happened last episode... I'm lowering those expectations. Let's get a solid mid-table championship finish. Let's try and get as many of these players with really good potential, as many minutes of first-team football as possible, and really prepare ourselves for in the next few years to go on a bigger push, where hopefully some of these youngsters we've got will have had time to develop, time to cook, and are ready to make that step up to the Premier League. Saying all of that, we definitely need a centre-back, and Ricky D, he still might be on his way out. Uh, he doesn't think he's going... He, he might be going. I've already offered him out to clubs, so we'll see if anyone makes an offer. And of course, we have got Miyazawa, the Japanese international, hence the, the Japan shirt I'm wearing today, potentially joining us. I feel like if Ricky D leaves the building, this guy is actually a pretty good upgrade. 21 years old, super consistent performer. I like the look of him a lot. Saying all of that, he can't be our only transfer. We've got £46 million in the bank, a whole load of money to spend if we want to completely nuke the financial structure of this club. Let's run the intro and get right into things, shall we? Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. It's another summer transfer special. The season starts in three weeks. Let's get down to business. We're not defeating the Huns today. We need to sign footballers. Of course, this coming championship season is our second at this level. Undoubtedly, this is the hardest division, I think, to get out of, especially if you've risen through the leagues really quickly like we have. The gap between League One and the top championship clubs it's pretty blooming massive. Now, it's safe to say so far, this transfer window, as of last episode, hasn't exactly gone to plan. If you didn't see yesterday's hour-long video, potentially go watch that first. We have made, so far this window, £30 million in sales, £34 million received, £3.5 million set spent, Bilardo, the most expensive signing at £1.7 million, and of course, the big sale, Xenia, Left for 10 million. He's instantly got injured. He's out for four to five weeks. I look like a genius selling him now. And to be honest, when you compare him with Bilardo, I think Bilardo's better. Is that, is that a spicy take? Also, I love the fact that on this screen here, we can see we've made a profit of £30 million. But if I click on this screen here, because of the way Football Manager splits the transfers, like either side of the 1st of July, it doesn't include all those £30 million worth of sales. Instead, they're shown on last season's transfers. This has been a thing in Football Manager for the last few years. 
I really hope eventually they fix this. It makes no sense for sales that happen in June to show up last season when it's clearly for the coming season. Football manager, please fix. I suppose the glaringly obvious thing here is that uh, so far we have no transfers in to display. Whilst we have a big young squad, we do need to add some strength, notably because we sold one of our starting centre-backs last, e last episode in Matthew Mkise. Yeah, he has gone to West Brom. For £10 million though, I still think that's a good deal. Of course, the other notable sale of last episode, Oscar to Nottingham Forest. I didn't know he had a release clause. I, I didn't, <laughs> didn't know he had a release clause. 900k they've got him for. Look, there are some things that have been outside my control when it comes to transfers lately. This is completely on me. Now, if I don't manage to sign a centre-back today, in terms of who I'd probably bring in to play there, I think it would be Dia. But given the fact he's super inconsistent, that does scare me slightly. Of course, the other option that would be an obvious player to go for would be the one, the only, Victor Coyote, who is not a bad player, but I, I don't love him as a starter. Now, you might notice outside the match squad down here, we have got a load of players that I've promoted from the youth team, and there's a couple here who weren't here last episode. Luis Mosquera is our Panama youngster. Until we secure the signing of another striker, I think I'm just going to leave him chilling in the first team. The 19-year-old could be a useful squad player in case of emergency. At 19 years old, potential to grow. Spent last year on loan in the A-League. Didn't exactly light up that division, but truth be told, I feel like he could be serviceable in case of emergencies and to be fair the staff agree they think he's a championship player the other man i've promoted is klaus jaeger this guy developed a lot out on load i didn't realize until i kind of finished recording last episode i don't know if anyone else ever falls into this situation where um you have maybe a player you loan out they're kind of chilling in the youth team and you kind of just forget they exist jaeger is that man he had a very good loan spell last year for 1816 munich you can see here his development just in the last 12 months notable i have applied for a work permit for him. We're waiting on a result on that. I'm kind of hoping he'll get one. If he does get one, he could be a useful first team player this year. Could be the backup potentially to Ngoma at kind of the left-hand side of the pitch. Now, actually, speaking of that left-hand side of the pitch, you might have noticed there are a couple of little player role changes. I feel like I'm settled into this being our shape for the current year, the 4-2-2-2. In terms of the roles, I feel like we're going to mix and match a little bit, given the fact the board expectation this year is kind of mid-table, and I myself am not really looking to get promoted this year, want to develop youngsters. We're just going to mess around with player roles and stuff. But I think this shape is a shape that suits the squad that we've got. Whilst we have got some okay wide players, we are blessed with an abundance of players like Ngoma. Super creative players who, uh, well, they're not really the wingery, crossy type. Also, it's safe to say in terms of our strikers, uh, not many of our strikers can really head a football. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like we want to be crossing the ball too much. Now, we have got £46 million in the bank. As we discussed last episode, the sad reality is I just don't really have the pulling power to spend players that are worth spending massive sums of money on. And with that in mind, and given the fact that our stadium is in a bit of a predicament, I kind of want to ask the board for a new stadium. But if I do ask for a new stadium and they grant it, I think you can only get a new stadium requested once every 20 years in Football Manager. Sometimes the board will kind of override that kind of 20-year limit, but you cannot ever request it again. Given the fact we are only just selling out our current stadium, I'm going to make a request just for the board to expand the stadium for now. Down the line, we are going to need a new stadium, but... I don't think now's the time to ask for it. Whilst we're here, we might as well also ask to improve the training facilities. And why not increase the youth level as well? We've got so much money, I can't spend it on players. We might as well just spam some requests. Okay, transfer offers for Ricky D. <sighs> Ricky D's contract's up at the end of the year. He doesn't want to leave the club, but he won't sign a new deal. It's a very similar situation to NDIA this year and for Rarenton last year. I can't afford to lose him to nothing. I've promised him I'm not going to sell him. I'm about to break that promise. Bristol City just relegated. I'm going to ask for £7 million from them. They're willing to pay a little bit more, but they want it in instalments. How about £8 million, but I want it £4 million now, £4 million in six months, and I want 20% of any profit. Okay. I don't love the fact that it's over three years, the £4.4 .4 million we receive, but that is £9 million and a percentage of profit for Ricky D. He might not be happy about it. I've promised him I'm not going to sell him. I am selling him for that. There were a couple of other £5 million offers here locked in. I'm going to reject them, but I will just offer him out again for kind of £7 million up front, just to see if anyone's willing to pay that much. We already have a right-back replacement lined up, and given the fact that he is in the last year of his contract, as much as I love Ricky D, I don't think he's a player who's going to last in this team as we push towards the Premier League 
And whilst I'm a little bit concerned about the club hierarchy, given the amount of kind of inexperience we've got in our team, as you can see here, th there is no experience. But with that and the fact that we are lacking a couple of team leaders and influential players, it's a concern. But if we are being conservative with our expectations this year, there's no better time to let him go than now, I don't think. Ricky D is unhappy that I've broken the promise not to sell him. Well, here's the thing. He can be unhappy and stuff, but if that makes him more likely to move, that kind of just works out for me. I'm sorry, Ricky D. You've played yourself, son. The single most important area for me to solve this summit is the centre-back position. I need to bring in a centre-back. I thought we'd found some centre-backs last episode, and then, of course... Everyone turned us down. Of all the players that we've got scouted, the man with the highest reputation who wants to join us is Alessandro Sakati. Sakati? I think it said Sakati. This guy's 27 years old, Australian, was playing for Norwich. He's actually been a very solid championship level centre back. I quite like the look of this guy. When I compare him with Gasparini, he's not quite as athletic, maybe not as mentally good, but he is a very good defender and he's actually quite good with the ball at his feet. No one's made bids for him yet, but Coventry want him too. I'm going to request a scout report. Given the fact the season starts in three weeks, we've got to get the ball moving on this right away. I'm going to try and sign him as a star player. I should have asked his agent how much he wanted before I came into these negotiations. I mean, realistically, I don't want to be spending more than £12,000 on a player. But given the fact he was just playing for Norwich and he wants a match higher sterner clause, he's probably going to ask for like £30,000 a week and really, really upset me. Uh, I'll give you £12,000, three years. He wants 50... Okay. Mm, yeah, let's walk away. Oh my. That, that might be the most unreasonable counter-offer I've ever seen. There are some of our high-reputation centre-backs like Kerrera. Um, yeah, not very good anymore. Is Taruna Riga any good? I've used him in a few football manager saves. It, he can't run. I'm going to create a new scouting focus, although apparently we are at capacity. We do not have the capacity. Uh, I mean, I kind of need all these other searches, don't I? But I need a centre-back. I've already got this search going on for players across the whole back four, but I've also got a separate focus looking at players who can play left-back and right-back. So I'm going to make this a top priority. We need a centre-back under the age of 28 who has ability. This this is so important. I mean, we've got all these other searches going on. We've not found any full-backs yet. Although, near miss, Oliver Hansen. Near miss, he, he's quite good. For a million pounds from Las Palmas. Who's bid on him, though? Celtic and Wren. There's no way he'd want to join me, is there? No right back sound, but we are already looking at one. Goalkeeper wise, is there a next goalkeeper? We looked at Schumacher last episode and Vitkov. Uh, there is Hicks Spores here who plays for PSV. Uh, he's crap, isn't he? I don't feel like a goalkeeper is the biggest focus right now. Although I have promoted Bellardo to centre defence in mid, at least to start the year right now. That doesn't mean I'm not open to signing a player if the right player is available. There's a couple of players here like Keith Broadbent who are possible signings. This guy's not a bad little player. Um, has good potential. His current ability is a little bit of a question mark. Sugi, we looked at last, last episode. He is good as well, but not exactly what we need, I don't think, necessarily. Vaud Silla is playing in the second tier of France. He's very good, isn't he? But he is a defensive mid who has gets forward whenever possible. He wants to play as a centre mid with the ball playing, uh, oh sorry, ball winning midfielder role, not ball playing midfielder. That's not a role. Also wants a minimum release clause. I don't, I don't love it. We'll put him on the maybe pile. And then here we just have all my scouts just looking for high potential players all around the world. How many of these players actually want to join me? Uh, that's a slightly different question. Although Veyaquez here, we were looking at him last summer, I think at one point we looked at him, maybe even in the deadline day special he's a good player but he's not really improved i don't think since i last looked at him there's a few players here who have some really really high potential antonin rosicki a center mid who's a playmaker type feel like we've already got an abundance of those in our youth setup there's also arms back in here 18 year old striker plays for lilstrom he's very good isn't he He's really, really quick. He's about to turn 19, which if, if it's going to sound weird, if he was like a whole year younger, if he was about to turn 18, I'd think he's amazing. I look at those mentals. I look at that pace. He's good. <sighs> he is very good. Apparently he wants to compete for first team football. Uh, I can't give him that, but he would get a work permit and he's maybe available for a million pounds.
I'll tell you what, I'm, I am tempted. I don't want to have to pay any profit of next sell-on, but we've got money to spend. I should have bid less. Lilstrom, you can have a million pounds to your best young striker. Do I want another Senegalese player? Because Lamine Endor here, he's super injury prone and he's out with an injury at the moment. He's out for three to six months. I was about to say, he looks amazing. I have only looked at the technical column there rather than his physicals and the fact he's injured for six months. He, I thought we'd found another Senegalese player, but the injury is an issue. All I'm going to say is, respect to my scout who's just going around the world looking for young players, because there are actually some pretty good young players here. He's enough, and none that I'm willing to take a gamble on, but if we leave him doing this for a few months, he might throw up some good ones. I love the fact I'm now looking at the under-21s in Africa that we've been scouting. Dummer here actually doesn't look bad. He is a goalkeeper who's the international goalkeeper for South Africa. I look at him and think, wow, you're good. And then I see the injury prone and inconsistency. I need a centre-back. Let's leave. Might not have found a centre-back, but at least Marcus, the Norwegian striker, might be joining us. What squad status does he want? He wants to be a squad player. I'll tell him he'll be an impact sub. That might be a little bit of a lie. I know he's inconsistent, but you can see here, perfectionist personality. He could develop a lot. One thing to note is that when you get promoted to the Premier League, um, planning a bit ahead here, but you're limited on the number of players under a certain age you can sign a year. I, I can't remember what it is. I think it's like outside of the UK, maybe five non-UK kind of under 21 players. So actually signing a load of good young players now is probably in our interest because we are going to be limited if slash when we do get promoted. Anyway, Marcus, I'm throwing some big money at you here, mate. Please sign this deal. He signed that deal. He can already speak our language. I love it. We speak the language of love. That negotiation was wonderful. He's not what we need. And I'll be honest, there's some question marks over him. But I feel like we have a million pounds to take some punts on. And I like the look of this punt. Also, we've had some more offers for Ricky D here. These are not in line with the uh, the offer we got from Bristol City. So they will be rejected. Ricky D right now is the only player potentially leaving the club. A deal that would be worth nine million pounds spread out over a, a longer period. Obviously, he's not very happy at the moment, is Ricky D. I'm going to try and demote him to the under-21s to make him extra unhappy, so he really wants to leave. I hate the fact that this is how the relationship is breaking down. Thought we were going to say him last episode, and then, of course, he turned down West Brom. I need him to take the Bristol City offer. I'm getting a load of offers for Jaeger here, who I think is a useful squad player to have. He's 20 years old with a bags of potential. Uh, really, I should probably look to get him on a new deal. Still waiting to find out if he's going to get that work permit, but I've told him if a bit of £6.5 million pounds comes in we'll sell him no one is bidding anywhere near that so potential headache on the horizon there a headache that's on the horizon now toby hines has stopped turning up for training the 20 year old really wants to force a move and i really want to keep him i mean he's got a five-year contract he can deal with it more offers for Jaeger here paok offering three million pounds that is still half of what we're expecting for him. And Zhao Victor, attracting lots of interest last episode, continuing to attract interest. Leave him alone, he's not for sale. Work permit news, Klaus Jaeger granted a work permit, that's really useful. I was hoping he would get one, like I mentioned. I had a really good loan spell from a development point of view at 1816 Munich, and I think he can contribute this year. And elsewhere, uh, Miyazawa, the uh, right back we were looking to sign from Japan, awaiting a work permit. We will find out about that in five days time. That's gonna be a painful wait. Okay, Hey, this guy, he looks good. Joel Jedernak, in the search for a left back, this guy's popped up on my radar. 10 caps for Australia. We were looking at a different Australian centre-back last episode. I don't know if he's re related to the Jedernak, you know, former Crystal Palace player. Can we see that? No, okay, he's not. He, clearly, Jedernak's just a really popular last name in Australia. Now, I will say, heading-wise, marking-wise, tackling-wise, not the best player, but he could improve a lot. He's only just turned 20 as well. If we compare him with Gasperi, I feel like he's of a similar mould to Gasperi, kind of a player who, um, very, very good athletically, maybe not quite as good in the air just due to his heading, lacks defensively, but could contribute a fair amount. Available as well for 150 to £1.5 million. Pounds. Presumably, he would want a move. Okay, he's got a £1.5 million release clause. He does want some release clauses, which I absolutely hate. I've never seen this option before. That's quite a list of release clauses. Sorry, but I'm not willing to negotiate their inclusion in any deal. Did he get rid of the release clauses? He still wants the release clauses. I don't want the release clauses. Release clauses are a problem to me because I feel like often they severely undervalue players, especially younger players who are going to develop and whose valuations are going to increase. I don't want to lose this guy for £4 million. If he was my player right now, 
I wouldn't be selling him for four million. Um, we'll make an offer. Let's see what his other demands are anyway. I really like the look of him, so that's frustrating. I'm just looking for a list of other centre-backs of international caps. There's actually another Australian here, Christos Papadopoulos. He is 21, six caps for Australia. He's not a bad player, but he has the same issue where he has no marking and heading. I guess in the year 2031, people have just stopped teaching defenders how to mark and head. Clearly not essential aspects of the game. Okay, well, Jerdanak is going to talk to us because we've hit his release clause. I hate the fact that these these release clauses that he wants in the deal. Are they removable? Okay, they are removed. That might change things slightly. He wants £8,000 a week, but I can remove the release clauses, which was a bit of a question mark. I feel like of all the players we've looked at, he is one of the better options. Given the fact we're getting him for a release clause and we're going to be removing the release clause, I'm going to offer him the big bucks. 600 k I'll give you. Your agent can have £55,000. Can we get a contract extension after promotion put in there? I might be really pushing my luck here. Okay, you know what? This isn't unreasonable. Deal negotiated, £9,000 I've had to settle on in the end, but it's a three-year deal with two years extension after promotion. If we are promoted, his wages will go up to £13,500, which for a Premier League club would still be a really good contract. Still got to wait on a scout report for him, but I love the mentals, I love the physicals, the technicals are a bit of a mess. But if we are looking at this year as a year of kind of development, you know, trying to make steps up, giving this guy loads of minutes in the championship could be mad for his development. Obviously, perfectionist personality is nice. The big question mark really is, what are his hidden attributes saying? What is his potential like? Is he inconsistent? Is he consistent? I'm going to prioritise that scout assignment. I now need to hope that no one goes in for him. Okay, the board don't want to increase the youth level. Please increase it. I asked for this last time. They said they were going to make stuff happen, and then they didn't. Come on, striving for the best attainable youth level should be our dream. Come on, the fans are behind me. They love me. After all I've done for this club, Brian. I'm disappointed. He's made up his mind. I mean, let's look at the positives. We're spending £5 million to improve the training facilities. We're going to have, as a championship club, five-star training facilities. That's something I don't think I've ever done before in football manager. I'd like to think that our facilities would kind of give us some pulling power. You know, team players would want to join us, especially maybe free agents, just to try and develop with us. Don't feel like that's really reflected in the game all that much. I really, really want Jerdinak to be good. I really want him to be good. He looks so... He's only just turned 20, like, months ago. He is mad. Is anyone else in for him yet? No. Please make a decision quickly, Joel. Well, at least one of our new signings is going to be happening. Arms back and waiting on a work permit. This guy, definitely a little bit of a punt, but sometimes it's fun to have a transfer gamble. Looking at players here who have at least one international cap at the age of 21, slaughtered by world rep. Mustafa Fawad here looks really good. Only just turned 20, Egyptian player. He is on £16,000 a week, I've just noticed. Uh, okay, never mind. He wants £22,000 a week to play for us. He's good, he's not that good. Lee Seong Jin here is not a bad player. 21 years old, South Korean international, but... <sighs> I mean, I'm tempted to take a pun. I, sh I, I don't need him. He's not the centre-back we need. Interesting to note that an Alayuelense player, you know, the, the Costa Rican team who had some good players, but they didn't want to join me. One of their players is showing up now as a realistic transfer. Has our reputation increased to the point where I can sign their players? We did scout a couple of their guys, like Eric Salas here. He is not a bad little player. Has really low reasonable wages. Might actually want to join me, potentially. Is, it, is he worth going for? Okay, our bid for Salas has been accepted. 900k for this guy. It might just be worth a little bit of a flutter, I feel like. He's really not a bad little player. He does want to be a star player and play as many games as possible. That does put me off slightly. Also, he wants a release clause. Nobody liked that, and I can't play him as a central midfielder because we don't play with them. He really wants to play as a centre mid with the role of central midfielder. I can't give you that. We do not We do not play with that position. We do not have the capacity. I'll send you on a language course. How does that sound? Okay, this ain't happening, is it? I mean, do we just promise him the centre mid position? I'm going to just promise him it. If he, if he cries, he cries. He wants a much higher sterner clause and he wants £12,000. You know what? This has gone too far, hasn't it? This has got he's not that good. Don't know if this is a good reflection for his potential ability, but Marcus Armsbacken has been granted a work permit. Like the look of this guy a lot. Norwegian young striker. Could he be the next Erling Haaland? We're certainly going to hope so. £1 million for him. 
Yeah, we'll see if he comes good. Also, we've got a load of staff members signing new contracts. We're tying everyone down to long-term deals. I say long-term, actually. The longest I've been able to re-sign a lot of the staff for is just two years. I don't know why I can't offer them longer deals, but football manager things. Elsewhere, stadium expansion approved. 6,000 seater. We are about to max out the stadium. It's going to cost 950k, and uh, work on that will begin at the end of the season, and it'll be done for next year. Imagine if we're in the Premier League with a 6,000 seater stadium. I don't even know if that fulfills the minimum requirements actually for a Premier League ground. Probably not. Berlin Road, which has been our home for a very long time now, it is capped with an expansion capacity of 6,000. So we can't make it any bigger after this. We are going to need a new ground sooner rather than later. And actually, one screen I've not shown all that much during this save game is the history panel here. You can see kind of the current legends, icons, favoured personnel at the club. Plenty of familiar faces over here. I'm the only legend. Imagine if they named the stadium after me. That would be fun. I have also just been reminded by the fact that NDIA is popping up here. He still doesn't have a new contract, does he? He still doesn't want to talk to me about a new deal either. I'm going to have to sell him before deadline day. I can't afford to lose him for nothing. It's so annoying. He's one of the few good regen fullbacks that you see in a football manager save game. He's ours but potentially not for that much longer. Marcus Alms back in here. He's joined us. He does actually look like a pretty good player. A little bit of a question mark over his potential, but he's got pace. I feel like in case of emergency, he could do a lot worse as kind of an emergency striker option. I do wonder with his arrival, maybe now I need to look to move on Mosquera, even if it's just to go out on loan for the year. You can see here, Alms back in, I think he's just a marginally better player. Not a great deal in it, but Mosquera is never going to get homegrown at club, so yeah, I'm going to try offering him out for a loan. See if anyone's interested. Okay, Miyazawa has been granted a work permit. Available for us to confirm the signing off for £2.5 million. I am just going to delay it just because I want to make sure Ricky D leaves the club. <laughs> oh, we've been here before with Ricky D. He's currently talking to Bristol City. He's unhappy. I'm hoping that this is the, the you know, the breakup happening. And I know it hurts for him right now, but I feel like the breakup is good for both of us. It's not him, it's me. I just need him to actually leave. Still waiting on any news with Jerdanak. Has anyone else made any bids? No. Okay, I'm, I'm desperately hoping he's going to sign for us. Still waiting on the scout report, mind you. Salas, the Costa Rican we were looking at, LA Galaxy have just made a bid for him. Yeah, he's probably going to go to them now, isn't he? Jerdanak's move delayed due to work permit. He should get one. I mean, he's got loads of caps for the national team. I think we found our centre-back, everyone. I suddenly feel calmer. I want all the fans of squad numbers to know I am actually going to do squad numbers properly this year. I hope you're happy. Please clap. I can't believe how seriously I've just done the squad numbers. I've even left a gap for the number two and number four for a new centre-back and a new right-back coming in. This is next level organisation. New season, new me, or something like that. I'm being suggested more Costa Rican players. This guy actually has more reasonable demands. Zuniga here, 19 years old. Is he good? I mean, he's not bad. I just have so many players like this guy. It's actually hilarious the number of kind of advanced playmaker type players we have, or at least players who could play there. There's Raul Bilardo. Jose Luis Colque could definitely do a kind of playmaker role. Jaeger, I think, really could play that role as well, centre attack in mid. And then even in the under-21s, we've got players like David Gillian, who, of course, came through last year's intake. And last but not least, a man who doesn't have a work permit, Ichikawa. This guy is weird. He can't run, and his physicals are kind of awful. But he's got ridiculous... Ridiculous mentals for a 19 year old and this vision like this like little sticky out bit on the polygon with 17 vision 14 passing and 16 flare they're the three attributes by the way that go into that bit of the polygon they're all exceptional like he could be an elite playmaker but he doesn't have a work permit can i get him a work permit yet I can't. I mean, we can appeal for it in like three weeks' time. If he doesn't get it, there should still be time to loan him out before the transfer window closes. I think that's probably the plan. Championship top goal scorer odds. Uh, none of these players are ours, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Okay, my scouts have come back with the report on Jedinak. They think he's a championship quality player. Don't love the fact he's inconsistent, but actually his potential looks really, really good. That kind of excites me. I feel like we're a centre-back and right-back potentially source. The last major area of concern for the first team is the left-back area. I don't know what to do with this NDIA situation. I can't afford to lose him for nothing. I do actually have now the option to enter contract negotiations with him. If I can't get in with these talks here, though, 
I think we have to try and sell him, which, I, I mean, it kills me to say it, but I don't want to lose him for nothing, and I'm struggling to see a world in which we can keep him around. I can't ask his agent about the demands, and yeah, he doesn't even want to talk to me anyway. He needs us to improve our squad significantly. Well, I guess the mission now between now and... And the transfer window closing is to strengthen it. Why do I feel like all of this leads to me on deadline day being here doing a live commentary special where we're trying to find a new left back and trying to sell NDIA? I feel like it's inevitable. I'm feeling a lot calmer today than I was last episode. I know there's like a theory, right, that during kind of life or death scenarios where humans feel like everything's out of their control, they kind of have a calm about them. I don't know if that's me right now. Maybe I've just accepted the inevitability of the fact that the playoffs is going to be tough and it just makes it easier now just to kind of embrace what's to come. I don't know, maybe I'm kidding myself. I actually really like the signings we're doing right now. Like, I know we're not spending all the transfer budget and there's nothing huge and flashy, but with Ricky D, and I, I'm saying that with enthusiasm, with Ricky D leaving the building for £9 million, I feel like I'm ready to move on. Ricky D, what a servant to the club. Round of applause, please, for him. £9 million for Ricky D. I'm delighted about it. I've noticed it. The squad's not happy about it. Unhappy players. There is one player or two players. And Goma and Gasperi concerned about Ricky D. What's up? Rounded explanation. We're going to get into one you. We already have a few targets in mind to replace him. I mean, that was productive. I mean, we've literally got the right back. I can now sign the right back. I bet we sign this guy, uh, Miyazawa, and they decide he's not good enough to replace Ricky D. That's 100% what's about to happen. But I'm going to confirm this deal right now. He is about to become our highest earner, but I like the look of this guy. He's very good. Are the players happy now? I hope the players are happy now. Keita Miyazawa, I, I love him. I love it. Look at his ratings. He tore it up in J1 for Raysol. He's going to be great for us. Raysol, who we've just signed our new player from, is a weird club. Not because they're, you know, Kashiwa Raysol, and that's weird, but because that old name in Football Manager, all the Japanese teams used to have fake names. Their name used to be Funabashi Bandits. And I don't know about anyone else, Funabashi Bandits is just a fun name. I'm a bit sad that they've got their real name now. Genanax work permit decision is going to be made in two days. If that goes through, oh, I'm going to be delighted. Championship top player odds. NDIA is up there. The left back, the third favourite to be player of the year in the championship. He might not even be here come the start of the season. Or at least the end of the transfer window. I don't know what to do about this situation. Do we just keep him around? I might as well just ask his agent about any market interest. Apparently no one wants to make an offer. If no one wants to make an offer, surely he should sign a new contract with us. I mean, I've just made a new signing. Does he want to talk to us now? No, still need to make the team stronger. And Goma is pleased that I've made a promise to strengthen the defence as soon as possible. I mean, I have to hope that the two guys we're signing this window in Jedinak and uh, Miyazawa are going to be adequate for that promise, because otherwise we're in trouble. Even if we lose NDIA, let's look at the positives. We do have two players in the top young player odds. That other player is Roger Ospina. Clearly, people like the look of this guy, and to be honest, I feel like we're pinning a lot of our hopes and success for this year on him. He has got to come in, he has got to step up, and realistically, he has to be the man to replace Oscar. Oscar was a bit hot and cold for us. He didn't always show up for games. And when you compare the two of them head to head, I'd argue Ospina is the better player. But what Oscar did contribute was some really meaningful performances. He would win us games. Eight player of the matches in 38 games kind of shows that. Obviously, he's still gutted we've lost him, but... I don't know. I'm feeling confident about our Spina. Please don't obviously cut this bit of the video out and send it to me on Twitter out of context when he's not scored after 10 games. That would not be nice. Still amuses me that our transfer budget says £71 million. Pounds. I mean, to be fair, now I could actually go out and spend tens of millions of pounds on players. The amount of wheeling and dealing we've done is absolutely mad. It's just a shame that I don't really have the capacity nor ability to actually do anything with it. I almost want to make it a side goal with a safe game that we try and get a billion pounds in the bank balance. I feel like that might be the end goal, <laughs> the way we're going. Ah, okay, Jernanak's work permit's been rejected. We can appeal it. We have also got an ESC slot, so it's not the end of the world, but I really thought he would just get one. We'll find out about that on the 28th of July and also elsewhere. I haven't mentioned his name in a little while. Jake Cartwright's out on loan for another year. Remember this bloke? Yeah, we signed him back in the Northern Midlands League. In fact, he was one of our first ever signings. He's just enjoying a life of non-league football where he gets paid, I was going to say championship wages to go out on loan. He's on £180 a week, bless him. Right now, this is kind of my preliminary starting 11 and bench. Of course, I'm hoping Jed Anak is just going to come in and play at centre-back. Ender 
CIA situation unresolved. Bilardo is the deep line playmaker I don't hate. I do feel like defensive mid is the one area of the pitch where it's not that I don't love our options. I just wonder, is the depth going to be enough? Last year, Sanchez was our deep line playmaker. If we compare him and Bilardo, I feel like it's safe to say Bilardo is just a big, big step up. I actually feel like Bilardo is really underrated by our staff. Full disclosure, however, if I could find a defensive mid and they were good, I probably would go in for them just to offer a little bit of competition, if nothing else. Rylatch apparently has three and a half star current ability. I don't know which scout provided this scout report, but they probably should be fired. This guy's rubbish. Do I want a 33-year-old Renato Sanchez? Probably, probably not. I've just come across this player from Taiwan, Shen Fu Sai. He is currently at Brighton. His contract's actually expired with them, but he's just training with them still. When you look at his ability, he's not good enough, is he? He'd be our 12th best centre-back. He's not what I need. I'm currently looking at defensive mids with international caps who are on the younger side of things. He was one of a few players who popped up. Mokoena here is not a bad player. I mean, we've lost him Kize. Should I be going out and signing a new South African? We looked at their national team goalkeeper before. They got any exciting other young players? Any in the B team? Any in the under 23s? Don't mind me, I'm just going through every single national team looking at the young players to see if there's any players playing for African national teams who are like unusually young, maybe play for teams we could sign players from. I feel like trying to sign one of Leon's best young centre-backs. Probably not a realistic transfer, mind you. Let's be honest, this is peak Football Manager content, isn't it? This is what you come to watch Football Manager for. To find me looking for a Zambian international. This guy's quite good. He is injured, though. For two months with a broken back. We'll, we'll get a scout report. He does look very good. Ah, I noticed he was playing for a team called Will. He's on loan from Borussia Mönchengladbach. They're probably not going to sell him to me. This guy has a load of potential. He's got caps for Algeria and he's just been released by Nice. I mean, he'd be a very Nice signing. Nice signing. Okay, let's move on. He wouldn't get a work permit. I could allocate him an ESC slot. I don't I don't want to give him an ESC slot, do I? He's not that good. I love the fact that I go and look at the Benin national team and my scouts have already looked at a player called Raul Sesu, who I didn't know existed, but my scouts know he exists. Clearly our scout recruitment focuses are working because yeah, we've got players in Benin scouted. Some would argue it's a waste of money they're over in Benin looking at players. I just think it's good that they're casting the net wide. This guy's very, very good. 20 years old, Cameroonian international, valued at 4.7 to 7 million pounds. There's no way he wants to join me. He's got a release clause of 7 million. Is that an active relegation release? Oh, 7 million pounds for this guy. Oh, it's so upsetting when you find players this good and you just can't sign them. Should I just make an offer? There's 19 teams that want him. Why, why not just make a bid? You don't know unless you try. You know, sometimes you just got to shoot your shot. Apparently Bournemouth, Burnley and Cardiff want him. So surely he'd want to join us. This is the downside with looking for all the national teams. You find players like this guy who look amazing and you just think, if only my reputation was that little bit better. This is the kind of player who I'm willing to just absolutely demolish our record transfer fee for. But there's no way he's ever going to want to join me. Apparently our stature in the game isn't big enough. I'm fuming. It's not exactly the most high-tech method of scouting, but as you've just seen there, sometimes just flicking through national youth teams is good. Also, has just dawned on me. Should I look at Los Palmas' team? Because maybe they have some other good players. If they Were they relegated this year? Just gone. They were. Okay, what players have they got? Apparently my scouts have actually looked at some of their players. Garcia Leon, is he good? I mean, he could be really good. Decent potential, 20 years old. 7.4 million isn't cheap. Elliot Paris, 22. Uh, I mean, for 3 million pounds, he's reasonably valued, but inconsistent injury prone. Not for me, Chief. Diego Marino, is he good? Fairly ambitious personality. I mean, he's got really good kind of physicals and he can kind of defend. He's 21. Do you want to sign a 21-year-old who can kind of defend? The worst thing is I kind of... I kind of do. I hate his mentals. I hate the fact he's got Knox ball past opponent, but there's a lot to like about this guy. Apparently he might actually want to join us, though he wants eight to £11,000 a week and he wants release clauses. Can we get rid of those release clauses? You know what? I might make an offer. Should we just make an offer? Why not? He's got a minimum release clause of 4.7 million. They've just locked that in. They really value him highly. I don't think I want to spend £4.7 million on him. 
But I kind of just want to know if you'd even want to talk to us. They have got some other players, although Las Palmas' other players, not qu not quite as exciting, if I'm being honest. Who else was relegated last year from La Liga? We're now looking at La Liga's relegated clubs. That's the point in the transfer window we've hit, everyone. Okay, Alaves didn't have anyone too exciting. Hetafe, have you got anyone? They've got a 17-year-old in their first team. Danny. Is Danny good? Danny looks like he could be quite good. There's no way he's going to want to join me, is there? He didn't want to join me. Again, I am impressed by our scouts. The fact they've got some of the players scouted at Hatafe. They also had some of the players at Alaves scouted as well. I wonder if I should go look for all the other, like, big continental leagues that I've got loaded. Right, we've done Spain. Let's go to Italy. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to sign any Serie A players, but who was relegated last year? Genoa. Do, do they have any players? I mean, obviously, they have players. I, I, do they have players who actually want to sign for me and are good? Are any of these players good? I mean, they're not bad. I was hoping there'd be like some super standout, wowza Rooney, I need him kind of player. There's not the wowza Rooney, I need him kind of player popping up here. Italy let me down, on to Germany. Okay, Cologne were relegated. Cologne have some good players from the looks of it. Jamir Amiri here. I mean, he's very, very good, isn't he? Who's bid on him? Sunderland. So other championship teams are looking at these kind of players. Of course, last time we were competing with championship clubs, last episode for signings, it went so well. Holy crap, this guy's good. Feti Zekri. He is an Algerian player who looks like he's had an incorrect face assigned to him in our regen face pack. He looks very, very good, doesn't he? There's no way he's going to want to join me, is there? Yeah, no circumstances. Available for £10.5 million. Pounds. He's 19 and this is how good he is. 20 determination. I'm going to make a bid anyway, just so I can say I tried. Cologne do actually have some quite good young players. I'm just going to scout them all just so I've kind of got them on my radar. Dusseldorf, a slightly smaller club, I feel like, in Germany by comparison. They don't have as many young, exciting players. In fact, when you actually look at their players, they've got a really small squad for a team that were just relegated. In hindsight, maybe I should have done this a little bit sooner, but you know what? We're here. We're trying to do it now. Are there any players playing for Auxerre who are any good? Uh, Vincent Clerk, is he good? No. This guy looks good. Clement Charbonnel. That was my best French, by the way. 22 years old, defensive mid, deep line playmaker. He's very, very good. I quite like the look of him. He is about to turn 23. He didn't have a great season in Ligue 1. He, he's got perfectionist personality, and I really like the physicals. I want between six and seven million pounds for him, and he expects wages of 48 to 63 thousand pounds a week. That's a no. If I want to sign another Senegalese fullback, I think I've found my man, but I don't need another right back right now. Saint Etienne have been relegated. Saint Etienne produced some really good players in Football Manager. Have they got anyone good in the kind of senior team I should be having a look at? Bernard? Is he good? He's asked to leave. Who wants him? Everton and Sheffield United want him. He's good, he's not great. Fabien Riviere here is a player that we have actually got scouted. My scouts looked at him at some point. Uh, I assume they've not recommended him to me because he's not a realistic transfer. He might want to join me. 11 to £14,000 a week. He's quite good as far as deep line playmakers go. Super consistent, loves important matches. 22 years old as well. Compared to Bellardo, he is a much stronger defensive player and he also has some really good mentals. I, like, I do like this guy. 15 tackling as well is nice. How much are they going to want from him? I'm going to bid 4.5 million. Uh, they think they can get more. They're probably right. 5.5. Take it, please, Saint-Etienne. Okay, our offer for Marino has been accepted. Diego Marino's release clause has been triggered. He wants eight to £11,000 a week. Nottingham Forest also want him. First, they stole my striker. Now they're trying to steal players that I'm not sure I actually want, but look like they could be quite good. There's a lot of things he wants. He wants to be a star player. He thinks he's a star. He thinks he's a... Mm. I mean, compared to Jerdanak, he can defend and run a little bit better, I suppose, but I think Jerdanak's a better option who's younger. And yet there's still part of me that feels like, well, let's just try and negotiate with him. I'm going to get rid of the stepping stone thing. He wants a minimum release clause of 23 million. To be fair, it's one bid 23 million. Million, it'd be quite difficult to say no. Yearly wage rise, nobody like that. Minimum release clause, uh, mm, 23 million is so much. Is he ever going to be a 23 million pound player? I don't think so. I'm going to remove the non-promotion release clause and I'm going to bump up the minimum release clause to 25 million pounds. Can I make it expire sooner? I feel like that would be good. You know, release clauses have been a problem lately. 
I'm fine. Everything's fine. Can he do £10,000? Okay, he did not like that. All right, Diego, I'll give you a big signing on fee, but the £10,000 has to stay. I'll give your agent a load of money as well. If we're promoted, your wages can go up to £15,000 a week. That feels fair. This is a good deal for us. Why are you trying to ruin a good thing? Who wants his right wage to go up after league games? That ain't happening, sunshine. I'll tell you what, if you get assists as a centre-back, I'll give you £5,000 per assist. That's a fair deal. He's agreed to that. I'm not sure if he's worth this kind of money, but well, I kind of want to get the scout report now. Based on his demands, his valuation and stuff, and the release clause he's expecting, I wonder if he's just got good potential. Also, could be an option as a backup right back. I mean, he's got 11 crossing. I feel like the most comparable player I've got to him is Coyote in terms of kind of athletic centre-back. Is he better than Coyote? Maybe marginally. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, Zekri, the guy from Cologne, has no interest in talking to me. Uh, I'm going to pretend I'm shocked. Rugby Town players in the final year of the their contract. Uh, yeah, uh, one of these players, not like the others. One player whose contract I am going to extend is Colm Stair. This guy's actually been playing for the England under-21s team. I say playing. He's made one appearance for them. He's been developing nicely, a little way off the first team still, but maybe a player just to have on your radar as, you know, a potential graduate who could feature in the first team eventually. Also, Saint-Étienne have delayed the decision on Riviere here. Uh, I'm going to make a slightly bigger offer for him. I'll give you six million. They love it. Apparently has doubts about negotiating terms. There's more interesting options elsewhere. Oh, don't do that. Don't hurt me like this. Although he does want to be a defensive playmaker. Uh, sorry, defensive midfielder with a deep line playmaker role. That's where I want to play him. This is the kind of promise I can keep. He wants £15,000 a week. The worst thing is I think he's probably worth it. Um, because I don't want to knock up the average wage too much, but we've got money that we can definitely just pay up front. I'm going to try offering some big signing on bonuses and limit his wage to, say, 11,000. I'm hoping he'll just agree to this. He did not agree to that. I want to keep the wages low, but I'm willing to front load the contract with some additional fees just because it will prevent other players within our first team looking at his wages thinking they should be on significantly more. How does 12,000 sound? He loves the sound of that. He signed that deal. Four-year contract. I feel like that could be a really good signing if we pull it off. Now we just have to sit and wait and hope that none of these teams here make any bids. If any of them make an offer, he's not joining us, is he? A lot of the players are concerned about Toby Hines' unhappiness. He wants to leave, yeah, he does, but the teams that are making bids are not offering enough. For a 20-year-old England youth international with this kind of ability, I want way more than anyone has actually offered so far. Why would we want to let our good players let go? What good is it doing keeping him here if he doesn't want to stay? Yeah, that's ironic coming from you, isn't it, Murphy? I'm not going to win you around. Let's just call it there. I don't want to sell him. He's not for sale. He's got five years left on his current deal. I feel like we give him six months in the team and he's probably worth even more than he is now. You know, if someone wants to make an offer near his valuation... Fair enough. They all think he's got significant potential to break into their first team as Premier League clubs. Show it in your offers. I am hoping that if I sign Fabian, maybe that is enough to convince NDIA that we are strengthening the squad and he should stick around. Obviously, Jerdanak's joining us. Marino we're still waiting on the scout report for. I don't think I'm going to go through with this deal, although I will just wait to see what the scouts have to say on him. I mean, he only turned 21 recently. He could be a useful squad centre-back option. We don't actually have that many right-footed centre-backs, and the fact he can play right-back as well is, I guess, useful. Has just dawned on me the season starts in a week. I mean, we've not got Jerdanak's signature confirmed yet, but in two days, that will be all locked in. Hines has handed in a transfer request. I'm going going to accept that request, but I am setting an asking price here of 7.5 million. That is a fair amount. I don't care if he thinks that's unreasonable. He can do one. I feel like when you look at strikers in our ranks, we've got Ospina, Faye, Colke, Niele, Espinosa, Heinz, you know what? He is falling down the pecking order. If someone bids 7.5 million, they can have him. No qualms. Also, scouts are recommending more players. Joel Suarez. For some reason, I was expecting something more exciting than that. But I love the fact our scouts are now just recommending Uruguayans. Uruguayans were a big, like, thing for us last year in Parc de Prem. Maybe it's time to enter the Uruguayan era. Also, Norwegian player here, Danielson. Mad, mad potential. Current ability is not amazing. Is he good? I don't think he's that good. The staff rate him highly. I'm less keen. Is this guy a cat? Because he's meow. That's lit. 
<laughs> had to get one in this episode. Based on the panic I was feeling going into today's episode and the fact we've only just played over two weeks in game time, I actually feel like we've made some really good progress today. I'm feeling okay about things suddenly. Jedinax work permit's been rejected. We will just allocate him an ESC slot. And alongside that, we've got some new coaches joining us. Frank Bohr. New goalkeeping coach, like the look of this guy. And also a new scout, Akas, is joining us. 39 years old, has knowledge of a load of places around the world, and also has some really good scouting attributes for someone who's only 39. Jerdanak, welcome to the club. £1.6 million of this guy. I think that's money well spent. And with that signing, Ngoma drops the concern about the sale of Ricky D. Everyone is happy. I have loaned out here Isaac Warren, or rather offered him out for loan. I need him to get some first team minutes as a goalkeeper somewhere. No one wants him to be their first choice goalkeeper though. Oh, 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 we've had bids for Toby Hines and they're actually at 7.5 million. Which is annoying, really, because I didn't think we'd get bids that high. Uh, I guess we're selling him. I mean, Brentford have bid 7.5 million. Should I just ask for more now? I know it was his asking price, but okay, they, they didn't like that. Well, what I'll do is I'll accept the Southampton offer of 7.5 million, reject these other offers, and now we'll offer him out for more now. We'll try and get a little bidding war going. Uh... Nine million pounds. Anyone want to make a bid? Nine million in the room. Anywhere in the room. In the room, in the room, in the room. I was hoping someone would make the bid. We've got to hit continue a few more times. I'd be an awful auctioneer. Nine million pounds to Brentford at the back. They didn't give me that offer a moment ago. They've now given it. Now, of course, they've given it out. Right, accept that offer. Reject the other offers. Then we're going to turn down the Southampton offer of 7.5 million. And now we offer him out again. I mean, you can see where this is going. 10 million pounds. 40% of profit. That's what I want. Southampton, come make a bid. Birmingham City in a few days' time. Uh, yeah, we're quickly getting to that date. That Heinz deal might not be resolved today. Oh, 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 my scouts like Diego Marino. They're giving him an A-. minus. I will say he is inconsistent and needs to learn the language and adapt. But my scouts do quite like the look of him. Good potential? Question mark. Let's have a look. Report here. Leading championship ability, potentially Premier League standard. I mean, he's 21 years old, but he's actually played a lot of first team minutes. He played 37 games in La Liga last year, albeit they did get relegated. I might sign him just to be the third choice centre back, you know. At the moment, that mantle is probably belonging to Mamadou Dia, who at 22 years old is not a bad player, but he's not a player who gets me super excited. I do think Marino, even if he's not as good in the air, he probably is an overall better upgrade. Also, here we have all the scout reports, all the different players we were looking at. Apparently, Com is extremely doubtful in a move to us. He's inconsistent and injury prone, but I look at the attributes and I want him. It didn't say he had no interest, just extremely doubtful. Maybe he's changed his mind. Okay, no, he's not, he's not changed his mind. He doesn't want to join us. Never mind. Marino move delayed due to work permit. That won't go through till the 5th of August. So you have a chance to plead your case down in the comments. Sign him, yay or nay. I really want to sign Fabian. If Fabian joins us, it would be massive. No one else has made a bid for him yet. And no one else is going to make a bid for him. We are going to be waiting a work permit for him. Hopefully he gets granted that. Jean Victor... Injured to start the season is annoying. Oh, Fabian could be joining us. Oh, I feel like this could be a really good signing. £6 million is not cheap, but in the grand scheme of players that we've been looking at, he is a notably good player. Okay, it's the 31st of July in game. We start the season in a matter of days' time. The Marino and Riviere deals here, they're not going to be resolved today ahead of the first game of the season. In terms of outs, Heinz is an ongoing situation. I'll give you some updates tomorrow. Today's episode's already been a little on the longer side. After the disaster that was the last transfer special, I hope that you are now team work the space in here at Rugby Town. I feel like we've made some good additions. It's going to be a tough season. The NDIA situation is not resolved. I'm going to hope that with the new signings we've got coming in, you know, some high rep signings as well. I think Marino could be quite good for the reputation side of things. Maybe, just maybe, with these two players joining us, he'll want to sign for longer. I, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. We will be kicking off the seasons to end the week next time. I'll see you guys then. I'm out.